Hey, it's Lynn Brown. I'm a speaker, trainer, and coach with the John Maxwell team and a teaching partner with Empower Living. Welcome to the Gritty Women podcast. You know, when I think back about just my life and where I am now and how I got from where I was to here, it's just, it just really blows my mind sometimes. But I mean, honestly, y'all, I spent the first half of my life just trapped in the comparison trap. I was so bound by the opinions of other people that it was literally like living just trapped in a mental prison. And then one day I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I drew a line in the sand and I was like, you know what? I'm betting on me. And it was the first time I'd ever done that. And I began my journey of growth and change. And it was amazing because the things that I looked at began to change when I started looking at them differently. And then it wasn't, it was, I mean, not, not much time after that, I found this quote by Wayne Dyer that said, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change. And I was like, oh my, that is coming true in my life. And, you know, it's not that my life is perfect, but I'm, I'm surrounded by people who want to make a difference, you know, doing something that makes a difference at a time that makes a difference. And I think you probably would all agree with me right now our, across our world you know there's never been a better time for us to become the best versions of ourselves so that we can you know empower equip and encourage the people around us i am super excited today to bring to you one of my new great friends i apologize that was my phone alarm reminded me about the podcast but um, i'm super excited my friend debbie uh, brought a beautiful Anishka into my life. And tonight I get to bring her into your life. So she is going to come on and talk about her, her book that she has published in her life and just share her heart with you. So I'm super excited to welcome and introduce to you my friend Anishka. Anishka, welcome to the Gritty Women podcast. How are you doing tonight? I am super great, and thank you so much for having me on, Lynn. It's an honor, and it's a pleasure to be here. We're we're super excited to have you. I cannot wait to hear your your story and and hear your heart. So what are you most excited about today? So I am really excited about sharing God's love. And, you know, when I thought about your podcast name, Gritty Women, I was thinking about, you know, courage, women being encouraged. And so for me, I just really want to share how God amazing love for me has given me the courage to do so many things that I did not even know I could do. Daring me to be me, to be Anishka. And so that's what I bring today and sharing my story and how I was able to actually write a book based on my story. Wow. Oh, yeah. And so my story started well. I was born to a teenage mother. I grew up in a single family home and I had so much love. Like I had love from my grandparents, my mother, aunts, uncles, older cousins, but I still didn't feel love. Like I was missing something. And so for me, I was craving that love from my father. And I saw him occasionally, but I wanted more, you know, like I wanted to be daddy's girl, you know, mm-hmm. that, that little princess. And I entered kindergarten at a tender age of four, and I perceived in my mind that only the little girls who were fair-skinned with pretty long hair got all the attention and love. So I started to think and say, okay, well, that's probably why my daddy don't love me, because I don't have the long hair. I'm fair-skinned, but I don't have the hair. And so from a very tender age, I um, started having low self-esteem. And then I entered into elementary school. And so I had a PE teacher that showed me so much love, Lynn. Um, He called me by my nickname that made me feel so pretty. He always gave me this infectionate smile that brightens my whole day, a little pat on the shoulder. Okay, and I started feeling secure. So at that tender age of nine, I was like, hmm. So, you know, I started to believe that he can play the role of my father. But sadly, he betrayed my trust. I was molested by him for two years in elementary school. 
And on one occasion, it took place outside of school. We had a track meet and I came last, Lynn. I mean, dead last. I was so embarrassed and so shamed. I cried straight through. And so he comforted me by saying, come and go along with him to pick up lunch for the team. And so I went. And on our way for lunch, he stopped at a beach, a very secluded beach. And there he sexually molested me. So, you know, I was devastated beyond words. I was angry with myself because I felt I should have known better. And even though I was angry and hurt, I didn't want him to stop showing me affection. Could you believe that? Like I was trapped in this confusion in my mind. Like I wanted the inappropriate touches to stop but I wanted him to continue loving me. And so eventually I told my parents, but they didn't do anything. And so definitely I was like, you know, that's it. And I went on to high school feeling scared, having low self-esteem, feeling ashamed, blaming myself, for not being in love with my father. I knew I had to be the ugliest girl in school. And if that wasn't enough, I started getting bullied because of my full lips. And then I was molested again by a student. And I never told my parents because I vowed I wouldn't tell them anything else again. And so I kept that to myself. And then I couldn't understand, like, God, why you put me here on earth? Like, you put me here to be abused? Like, that, that's what I'm here for? And adults, I was sexually assaulted again on jobs. And I was becoming tired when, like, I was depressed. I was ashamed. I felt silly not being able to defend myself at any time. I was, like, tired pretending to the world like it was okay. And to everyone around, and I guess it's for most people, too, we carry this persona that everything is okay. But deep down inside, it's not okay. So despite that, I had a great husband and I had two wonderful boys. I was just beat up inside, distraught, scarred, nothing. And my husband loved me dearly, but I could not even accept his love because all I wanted was love from my father. So even when my husband tried to love me, it just didn't work. It was not working. And eventually one day I started seeing myself away from my kids, away from my husband. I'm like, okay, I could do this. They could live without me. They don't need me. I started to distance myself and the suicidal thoughts just keep coming and coming and coming. And then eventually one day I left home where my family thought I left to go to work. But I left and I was going to the beach. I did go to the beach. And my intentions was to drive my Jeep overboard and end all of this. But Lynn, this is, this is God's love. Like, God's love is so amazing because that was my plan, but he had a greater plan for my life. And like, when I truly decided to surrender to God, he showed me how he was always with me. Like, despite all the pain and trials we encountered, he is there. He reminded me in Psalms 139 and 13, that David said that God created my inmost being. He knit me together in my mother's home. So then I started saying, okay, if God knitted me in my womb, and then he did the same for you and everybody else. Um, so I can't be a mistake because God is perfect. He don't make mistakes. So that means I am perfect. That's right. Um, yeah, and so this light bulb just started to come on, and then Psalms 139 and 14, reminded me that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. But I know I probably kind of making it sound easy, but it wasn't that easy. I mean, for many years, I'd keep telling myself, convincing myself, I am God's child. I had to say this out loud. God loves me. He created me. I am uniquely in his own image. There's only one Anishka Deidre Payne Johnson with one purpose that he has for me to do. And I had to continuously recite this every day until it resonated in my heart and soul. So not only have I accepted that I truly loved by God, but today I can now have a relationship with my father. I, it cannot replace what I missed out as a child, but we presently have a relationship and we will continue in the future. But 
I just really want people to know, like, he is really giving me a voice now that don't give up on God. Like, he is so patient. He is so loving. And, like, I just encourage everyone, don't give up on yourself. Like, give God a try. And, you know, like you say, as pretty women, has the courage to do amazing and wonderful things when we put our trust in God. He is just amazing. That's so true. And I love that you brought up that you just finally surrendered. Yes. That, I, I think so often we chase after, you know, the things that we want, the success or mm-hmm. even the love, like you were saying, we chase after these things. And if we'll just slow down and surrender, then surrender everything to him, then yes. he will, he will make a way, even when it looks like there's no way. <laughs> And that's so wonderful that, you know, you've reunited with your father and Mm -hmm. your family is all together. And, you know, I would just encourage you to continue. And I know you know this, but just like you said, just harvest the good. You can't go back. Yeah, I can't go back. Fill in the gaps of the (laughs) past of what did or didn't happen, but you can harvest the good. Yeah. So I'm just so happy. So tell us real quick. I know that you, the story, um, Beautiful Butterflies, is about your life and about you. You're, you are the beautiful bur- butterfly. And so how can we get this book? Tell us. Okay. So this book, let me show Beautiful Butterfly. Look. Yeah. So it can be found on Amazon. Barnes and Nobles, anywhere that they're selling books, you can find this book. Um, I can also be reached on Facebook, Instagram, Heavenly Butterfly 242. And my email address is heavenlybutterfly242 at gmail.com. So heavenlybutterflies242 at gmail.com is your email. And then we can purchase the book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, anywhere like that. Yes. Beautiful butterfly. Yes. Let's see. That's awesome. How exciting. Thank well, you. I know that um, a lot of people will want to get this and, and read more about your story. And I look forward to just yes. growing with you and being on the journey with you. And I'm so glad that our paths have crossed. And I just appreciate you so much pouring into to our viewers. And I know that, you know, there are a lot of people that have gone through similar experiences like this, but just to take, just to take what, what has been put, set before us and surrender it to him. And he truly can, you know, bring the beauty for ashes. That's what he's done for you. Yes, he can. Like, you know, before you didn't understand, you know, pain and trial make you stronger or and it's like, what are you talking about? But, you know, you get to see it. Like, there are so many things. I didn't even know I was that strong. I didn't even know I had the strength. Even just to write a book, I was like, God, really? I don't even like English. You want me to write a book? And there you have it, just by surrendering and being around the right set of people, too, you know? the right community, the right circle, those who will keep encouraging you, speaking positively in your life. And for me, I could say I had that too. Like I had a good, firm community that always encouraged. And that's why I always encourage people because you never know what type of day a person is having. So a warm smile, a lovely word, just a hello, how are you with a nice smile can go such a long way. So... Yes, it can. And, you know, it's encouragement is oxygen for the soul, basically. And, and some people say, well, how do you know, you know, who to, who to reach out to or who not to? I'm like, anybody that's breathing could use some encouragement. (laughs) Yes. Everyone. (laughs) You're either going through a hard time, you're coming out of one, or you're, you know, you, you're just about, you're in the middle of one. I mean, that's just the way life is. And it's great. It's a great life. I'm not saying that, but it's just everybody can use encouragement. So everyone, everyone. Thanks again for, for being with us. And we look forward, like I said, I look forward to seeing what the next next steps are for you. Yeah. And just <laughs> just glad that we're on this journey together. So thanks yeah. again for pouring into our community. And remember, you know, gritty is the new strong and gritty is the new pretty. And you know, we we are all equipped 
and resourced to to become who our creator designed us to be so yes. let's let's go out there and and make the world gritty for sure yes yes right. well, we'll see you next time <laughs> thank you lynn oh thank you okay.